Poppin' is your boy Mike Powers, hit the lights. For my real hip hop heads only. The next guest to honor this platform with his presence hails from Toronto by way of Belize and embodies the spirit of one who's eternally unfucking bothered. Not one to chase clout, instead, his rise has been marked by an earnest and unapologetic bearing of his soul. But you have to pull your head out of your ass to understand this. Let's keep it a buck. This dude is on the come up. His toe is at the doorstep of the cathedral. Church. Which is all the more exciting because for all the talent he's displayed thus far, he is still yet to peak. He has graced this culture by collaborating with the likes of Lord Juco, Finn, Flea Lord, Future Wave, Recognize Ali, Ito, Este Nack, Riggs, UFO Thieve, Raz Fresco, Daniel Son, Pharma Beats, Benny the Butcher, Bozak Morris, Conway the Machine, and more is on the way. Cross that border talking greasy at your own peril. His is the voice that bellows when there is nothing else left but the slaughter. Layman's terms, the man is nothing to fuck with. And now he's found his way to the next logical step on his matriculation towards lyrical dominance. On deck with the voice of hip hop. It's power. It's your king, nigga. Shine is not the only thing out of Belize and Drake is far from the only spokesman for Toronto. So let's do this, ladies and gentlemen, bosses and foot soldiers, runners and gunners, and enthusiasts of real lyrical hip hop worldwide. For the first time on the Mike Powers Show, it is my distinct honor to welcome an MC whose larynx has currently taken on the role of a sledgehammer, the future of the sport, AKA the force up north, a son. Eastwood is in the building! Carla, I baptize you in the name of Carla. I love that, man. It's yes! A... Yeah! Fuck! Hey, you got merciless over here. Excited over here, man. Woo! Hey. I, you, man. I feel like hey. I'm about to go uh, fucking wrestle for the whole heavyweight championship. No intercontinental title. I'm going for the chip. <laughs> it's my distinct honor, like I said in the intro, to have you on. Talking to you for over a year, like I'm going to get you on, I'm going to get you on. Timing is everything. And glad to see you grow in that time that it took me to get you on here. So let's go ahead and get right into it. You got elegant spit. Um, but the way you project is assertive. Not overly aggressive, but definitely you put your chest in it. Um, has that always been your style or did that kind of evolve? I think, I think it evolved. It evolved. I, I always was like, I was always a finesse. I talk fly shit. I've been fly. To be honest with you, I, I've been fly. I've been so fly to the unseen eye that right now my fucking socks and boxes match a jacket I'm wearing. That's how unseemly fly I've been. So my style has always been fly. So like I had more of a calm voice, but I think since the 2016 rolled around and I reintroduced myself to the game, that spirit's been in me. And a lot of a lot of my people, you won't know this brother, but out here there's this brother Chops. Rest in peace. Actually, his birthday is tomorrow. Rest in peace, my brother. He wanted this so badly. And since he passed, people say his spirit has been a part of me. And I think that's where it comes from. Just all from here, right from the fucking gut. You talk about fashion. That's like later on down on my list, but let's go ahead and get to it right now. Let's go. Where do you get your sense of fashion from? Um, I think it's, 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 it starts with my father. My pops, very fly, very fly, especially being from Belize and coming out here to North America at a young age, maybe, maybe 21. He always just had the new shit. He always loved new kicks. He had me in new kicks for the most part. I think it's him. Like, he always smelling good. 
he's the type of dude that I always had cologne. He, he, I, I was a big kid, so he's like, yo, you can't be a big dude and smell bad. You know, and my, my pops loves shopping. Like, we always took our trips to New York, took our trips to Florida, Jacksonville, took our trips to Texas. We took mad trips all over the States. And in, in, in the era that I grew up in, internet shopping was not a possibility. So you had to go to the places to get the shit. Yeah. I had to go to New York to get some gerbo shit. I had to go to New York to get some woo wear shit. I had to go to New York to get some Averex. Wait, did y'all hear what he to... said? He said yeah. woo wear, right? He said Merite Francois your bow. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. All that, all that. So uh, when I was young, before, before I came of age to purchase it myself, there's always a limit. There's always a limit. Like, yo, you get one pair of kicks. That would be for the whole year, you know? We yeah. go there before we go to New York before school starts. And and being that, I was decisive, you know, and he would stunt. Like he would get his shit. And I'd look at him and be like, all right, I need to stunt, you know, with my maybe $60 kicks. You know, 100 would be too much. You know, I had to get these jeans, you know. So yeah. right now you're doing too much. I mean, but I went on your IG. We'll, I think we'll go. We could probably may, maybe get back into this later. You're doing too much. I, I turn on your IG and I see all the fits. I look at the videos. I see the matching kicks. I see the um, the stuff with your name on it. Was you at the Louis store? What's that? Were you at the Louis store? I was on your IG. Uh huh. And you were sitting there, and you said I go to where, the like directly to the source. It looked like you were sitting in the Louis store on some. Oh, steps. that was a Louis store. Yeah, yeah. We went to. I went to Paris, and we went to um. What's the fucking road, the street? Well, there's there's this main street, some French word. They it ain't the Champs Elysees, is it? The Champs Elysees. Okay. So boom, we're there, and wifey needed a bag, and when we said wifey needed a bag, they brought the fucking champagne. I was like, all right, I need some shit too, and you know, we went there and we're sitting down. To, they they pull put out the white gloves. They touch everything with finesse, like you know, <laughs> finessings. You know, everything lightly, <laughs> precise. Uh, you know, we, we had to do that. I went went to Cartier, got my Cartier lenses. You know, this is the type of lifestyle. This is before rap. This has nothing to do with rap. So, you know, uh, I'm a businessman. I love getting bread. And that's probably why I never rapped in the first place. Not to say it's only for bread, but if I'm going to put my quality of time into it, I have to see that there's potential because I'm not an age. I'm not in the age where I, I could play. That's a win, right? When you take your girl to Paris, right. to the Louis store, right? You done base, you didn't close the deal once again. Um, yeah. the video for Shots Fired, right? You see Falcon on that's Falcon on stage at the beginning, right? right. Okay, you see Falcon on stage, and then you hear shots. Oh, as it ain't now, me and Monk lit up again. I will do a tune when I'm called Bodies. I want to go on that song. Yo, yo, I want to go on that song. Yo, stop the floor, bro. Yo, yo, get down. Get down. You was there when uh, Daniel's son was up at the front door and the incident happened? I was there. Because I spoke to Daniel about this when I interviewed him. Um, talk to me about the incident from your perspective. That's something that's a little touchy for me because um, I come from a... First off, that situation could have been a lot of different things could have happened on that situation. I don't like to talk about it because it feels like glorification to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we had, I had a lot of people in that building that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of things on me that could have changed a lot of li a life yeah. differently in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I was on the stage, I was actually behind Falcon Crest and I watched a lot of people dive back there and um, I take responsibility. Now, when, when we leave that place and, um, you know, people take pictures and Toronto News got a hold of it and said, yo, a son Eastwood, Daniel son, Cypher Soze had a show that was shot up and they put that on Toronto News. I don't like that. So I, I get I get confronted by my by by, by 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 the people where I'm from and say, yo, a son Eastwood, who are you? What are you doing now? Are you one foot in the street or are you one foot out? Because you can't you can't have this type of shit and be this type of shit, you got to make decisions. So it was a good thing at the same time because it made me wake up in certain 
aspects, but I, I really don't like talking about it. Do you feel like you're a part of this lyrical resurgence, but being in Canada, or do y'all tend to feel that you are apart from the scene? You know what I mean? Is it, is it a separation? Do you feel like you feel a part of it? You feel embraced by the New York side? I feel embraced by the, by certain brothers. You know what? I think Toronto, we've always had this chip on our shoulder because we are so similar to New York in a certain way where, you know, cold, metropolitan, um, and West Indian, like very, very Jamaican influenced over here. So, you know, the dance hall, the reggae, that kind of influences hip hop, especially that, that mentality, that battle mentality that, that put on a show, that fucking wagwa, like you can't fuck with us, you can't fuck with us, like, you know? I think that's a similarity, but we don't get accepted the same way earlier. But now I think with this new wave that Griselda, I think we're early, early like Daniel son been rapping like this for like since 2010, you know, and putting shit out that it meets the wave. You can't not include us. Can't not include y'all. And I seen all those brothers like the Rome streets. I seen those dudes fuck with that ST Nax, Al Davinos. I seen them fuck with Danielson on the early entrance. You know what I mean? So I don't think I don't think there's a separation. I think they acknowledge what's going on. I love how y'all earn it. Ain't nobody giving y'all participation trophies. No, no. no. Y'all y'all fighting and scrapping for this shit. And if you think about it, Rochester has their underdog mentality. Buffalo has their underdog mentality. So it's like it's not like New York City has less patrons in it then y'all all y'all toronto right. rochester right. um uh buffalo y'all right. y'all was the y'all made the boroughs act right again in right. my opinion right because i was in new york i don't know what year it was but i was buying mitchell and ness jerseys right and bringing them back right right you know i mean right. whatever right. year that was I'm, I'm in i'm in midtown I stole somebody's office chair. You know, the Africans that took me in the back alley. I didn't know if I was going to come out the motherfucker. You know what uh -huh. I mean? And I, I come out with a garbage bag. Me and my girl, she got a guy. I got, we stole a chair and we wheeling it down. You know what I mean? Broadway. Yeah. And, um, but Hot 97 was playing snap music. Yeah. Like, lean with it, rock with that. I listened to the radio for hours and they didn't hear nothing New York. I was, I, man, I almost... Yeah. I almost broke down, start crying when I was in New York. I'm sitting here in the Mecca and I'm not hearing none of y'all music. So y'all is the ones, in my opinion, that told the boroughs, nigga, we back. Y'all, it's okay to rap again. Right. And you know what? I think that starts for us right here in Toronto because at the end of the day, yo, salute to Drake's and salute to Tory Lanez. Those, those, they open up doors for us to be seen, right? To be scouted. But like, we got the same shit too. So we're already battling where we're from because we're out of the ordinary here. When the culture originally is this shit, <laughs> is this raw shit. It, right. So, so it is like, it's the same thing we're battling here too on top of it. So salute, man. Salute to everyone. New York, all those dudes. Respect doing the Mecca. We back. Um, we back. Um, and, and, and people don't know that um, Toronto been making noise in hip hop. Um, how much do you owe to cats that came before you in Canada like Maestro Fresh West, right. um, Cardinal Official, right. Chaos, and other people like that. How much do you owe to them? Everything, man. Like, like we owe a lot. We, we, we. I think brothers like Cardinal, you know, Shaclair, Solitaire, those brothers, Socrates, they kind of pass the torch to us now, because now we're in those type of circles where, where these people have to acknowledge us because we're getting love in Europe and New York's. They have to accept us. So one, we send the flowers back. Like we were like, wow, they're seeing us now. And they let us, they let us in their conversations. They let us in behind the curtains. They let us get information of like, yo, this is how it is. You shouldn't move with emotion too much. A brother like Cardinal gave me so much game. We owed him a lot, man, because they set the table for us because it's always been a tough place to come from Toronto to make it. And Cardinal and those brothers did a lot, man. They did a lot. I mean, that's and I feel like I need we needed to talk about that because um, you know, it's 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 Daniel Son and 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 Sose and and you and and all these guys now, 
But you know what I mean? People laid the foundation. Let's go ahead and get them cast their flowers. You know what I mean? And we know Cardinal is not done. You know what I mean? Uh, Maestro is still doing his thing. Right. That Maestro yeah. still out here. I see Maestro drop a joint with some some dudes from um, Esplanade. I seen them out there. That's a, a hood out here. And he, he's been giving back. I haven't connected with Maestro yet, but I know that's coming. Mishi Me. Mishi Me. She gave me oh, a yeah. big hug. When I ran into her, she she's fucking did so much for the city. A real bad guy, a real bad guy. What did what have you learned about this game over the past year? It's fickle. Um, it's it's timing. It's patience. It's hard work. It's grind. I learned that everything said isn't a promise. I see the. What I love about New York, New York's hustle, dudes from New York City, y'all, we have to cross a border, so it's a little different, but interstate traveling, y'all don't play. When y'all here, when New York here is a fucking show is going on, you see everyone there. Mm. You see all, all these dudes that you might see now that are, are coming, I use, like, Rome Streets as an example, like, he was at the shows when he wasn't performing, you know what I mean? Like, those guys are going everywhere and make, connecting those dots, and I realize that we have to do a lot more of that. You brought you you brought up Rome Streets a couple of times. Um, I have said over the past year, about a million times to people, Rome Streets is a fucking alien. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Your, your take on what he's doing lyrically. Oh, he's killing it, man. He's he's the MVP of the year. Self so you you see all the work he did and where he went from where he went to where he is now. That's undeniable. You one of the guys that seem to be able to rip over any type of beat. Right. Um you go from a song like Glow. Mm -hmm. Um, to like the way we the guy produced, where's the mayo? It's simple math, more equations. Blast from the past, put them fast in the grass just for hate and tap our glass when the cash cup. Really celebrated on my last run. I could have bought an ass them, but saved it for the. How was it working with Wavy? Wavy's dope, man. Wavy's easy. He's he's low maintenance. I think I think that um, <laughs> it's funny I'm laughing. Um, most of the people I work with is low maintenance and, and, and wavy fits into that. He's just like, yo, let's cook. I think I cooked. He wanted me for a feature for an album for the album that he just put out. And that led, this is like a year or two ago and a year and a half. And that led to him like, yo, why don't we cook something? I was like, why not? Boom. And he sent me some packs and I probably made like at least 30 joints with him. But um, we just tied that bow now. We got some distribution. We got all that shit, all the business. So that's coming out first thing next year. I've been sitting on this project for fucking six months. And he just on the boards, wavy, man. Come on, man. He on his way, though. He really on his way, for real. Absolutely. What's your explanation as to why some so-called gangsters in this game really act like bitches behind the scenes? <laughs> Do you want to answer that or not? Nah? I mean... I, that's self explanatory I'm, I'm not, I don't duck no questions, man. Um, bitches will always be exposed. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's by the gangsters and sometimes it's by another bitch. And the best time when a bitch gets exposed is when it's by another bitch. So a gangster lets it happen unless it has to happen. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. And I appreciate that explanation because what you're looking at on your screen right here, intro came voice of hip hop. I am not a gangster. Um, so, I mean, that's a whole different world. We, the, everybody that come from the hood is not a gangster. Even though we might be able to handle our own, we can box and all this other kind of shit. A gangster is a whole different thing, man. You know, right. Cats need to quit playing like that's what they are if they really not that thing. That's a serious thing. Absolutely. You know I mean? And that's why, and that's why I, if, you, if you really listen to what I rap about, sometimes... It's, it's really hard for me just to glorify shit because I'll always have amongst me talking that shit. There'll be a little bar in there that'll be like, yo, or you could pay this way because I find that these brothers that rap right now, a lot of, a lot of these guys that rap right now, they rather rap and they rap to live up to an image that they make up in their raps and it makes, it puts them in trouble. It puts them in big trouble. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten altercations with some of these brothers. And their fear within the altercation with me is that I'm going to expose them. When their fear should be that you need to get right because you're lying. 
So don't talk to me running scared of me because I'm going to diss you on a ra- on a record. Nah, you need to get right because the wrong thing is going to happen to you and mm. it won't be about rap. But they're trying to keep this image so good. And I just laugh like, you'll pay your dues. What the fuck was popping is your boy Mike? I 